Good evening, viewers of North State. This is the weekly roundup bulletin. On Monday, the by election to 43 Tapi Assembly constituency was held peacefully with a voter turnout of 96.25% till the close of polling at 4 pm on November 7. In a press note, Office of the Chief Electoral Officer informed that the electors of the 43 Tapi Assembly constituency exercised their franchise in all the 23 polling stations. The polling was conducted with no untoward incidents. A total of 15,256 voters, of which 7,788 men and 7,468 women were eligible to exercise their franchise. The by-election was necessitated following the death of NDPP MLA Noke Wangnao on August 28, 2023. The counting of votes will take place on December 3, despite ongoing protests to defer the counting date. Meanwhile, Chattiska recorded a provisional turnout of about 71% in the first phase of assembly polls, while in Mizoram, over 77% voter turnabout was recorded on Tuesday. In a recent declaration, GB Union Dimapud asserted that only indigenous GBs have the legitimacy to apply Naga customary laws under Article 371A on Tuesday. However, GBUD suggested that non-Naga communities in urban areas could be designated as Pradhan or Mukia, adhering to specific guidelines. The media committee, including Deblu Kole Kafo and Hotoshe Sumi, emphasized the enduring role of the Gaonbura institution, tracing its roots to British rule in 1866. They highlighted the introduction of GB institution in 1886 under the Assam Land and Revenue Regulation Act. GBs, they explained, operate as legal entities under Naga customary laws and practices outlined in Article 371A, effectively contributing to law and order in collaboration with authorities. They said that the first British headquarters for administering Naga Hills was established at Samuguting, now Chumukedima, in 1866 before it was shifted to Kohima in 1879. They pointed out that the main objective of GB institution was to represent the village and the government administration in the form of an entity to execute activities and assist as a medium of link between the people and the government. The GB union leaders explained that the term Gaonbura was Hindi or Assamese, meaning elderly man, village chief, a respect and honor given by the Britishers who were directly responsible for the village administration. On Wednesday, addressing the ongoing development, Nagaland Chief Minister Nipurio announced that discussions are set to address the issue of the proposed frontier Naga territory. Rio emphasized that talks would involve the center, state government, and the Eastern Nagaland People's Organization following assurances from the Union Home Ministry. During the meeting with the ENPO delegation, both sides engaged in fruitful discussions with the government ensuring support based on five key points. Rio stressed that the matter is a collective effort and urged against political interference. Regarding the ENPO's recent announcement to boycott the Hornbill Festival, Rio stated that the matter will be discussed. As the process for municipal elections commences, Rio affirmed the government's commitment to keeping all stakeholders informed and involved. In a follow-up on the recent consultative meeting organized by the Naga Council Dimapur regarding NLTP Act 1989 on Thursday, the four-hour meeting which took place at NCD Hall Dimapur ended without a resolution on whether to leave the NLTP Act in Dimapur. Seven out of nine Dimapur-based church bodies attended, sharing diverse perspectives on the contentious issue. NCD President Itsung Momo Kikon highlighted that the meeting focused on the potential lifting of the NLTP Act. While some church leaders emphasized strict implementation, others argued that the prohibition had failed, leading to increased drug use among youths. Kikon expressed concern about the ban contributing to the rise of illicit distilleries and spurious alcohol, leading to fatal consequences. He disclosed that the entity had written to the state government on August 30, 2023, urging the complete lifting of the NLTP Act in Dimapur. Vice President G.K. Rengma added that since the Act's implementation in 1989, rehabilitation centers have been emerged and deaths due to adulterated substances have increased among youths. He emphasized that lifting the act could positively impact the community. NCD suggested a trial period of one or two years for lifting the act with careful observation of its impact on society. Rengma clarified that their stance wasn't against the government or the church but based on the ground reality. The fact of the act remains uncertain as discussions continue. In a groundbreaking move, the Nagaland Legislative Assembly passed the Nagaland Municipal Bill 2023, incorporating a pivotal 33% percent 
Reservation for Women in Urban Local Bodies. Chief Minister Nipirio highlighted the importance of women's participation, emphasizing the need for better administered, developed, and organized cities. The bill excludes provisions for one third reservation of chairperson offices in ULBs for women, a departure from the earlier municipal act. Deputy Chief Minister T.R. Ziliang expressed joy over the women's reservation, urging their support and downplaying concerns about chairperson reservations affecting ULB elections. Legislators from various parties, including NCP, JDU, and BGP, voiced support, anticipating positive impacts on the entire state. The National People's Party acknowledged the bill's importance after a 22 years delay, emphasizing losses incurred during the interim. The first two women legislators, Salutuno Kruse and Hekani Jakalu, welcomed the bill's passage, terming it a significant stride for gender equality. Kruse attributed the victory to tireless efforts from women's organizations and male counterparts advocating for increased representation. Jakalu encouraged women to embrace the current progress and focus on active participation, despite the absence of chairperson reservations. As the bill awaits implementation, the optimism resonates for a future of equitable development and representation in Nagaland local governance. Further, the Nagaland government informed the Supreme Court that the State Assembly has unanimously passed a bill reserving 33% of seats in urban local bodies for women. The court, having criticized both the Centre and Nagaland earlier for non-implementation, was assured by Nagaland's council that the election process would conclude by April 30, 2024. The matter is scheduled for further hearing on December 11. Winter session 2023 of Parliament will take place from December 4 to 22 with 15 sittings spread over 19 days. Additionally, three significant bills aiming to replace the Indian Penal Court IPC, Court of Criminal Procedure CRPC and the Evidence Act are expected to be deliberated upon during this session. The Standing Committee on the Home has recently approved these three reports, paving the way for the consideration. Another noteworthy bill currently pending in Parliament pertains to the appointment of the Chief Election Commissioner and Election Commissioners. Initially introduced during the monsoon session, the government did not pursue its passage during a special parliamentary session, mainly due to opposition and resistance from former Chief Election Commissioners. This bill aims to equate the status of the CEC and ECs with that of the Cabinet Secretary as they presently hold the status equivalent to a Supreme Court judge. On the sports front, Indian team continues to rule the ICC World Cup 2023 chart, leading with 8 points. India has now qualified for the first semi-finals match after defeating Sri Lanka. The semi-final is to be played on 15 November against New Zealand. The other semi-final is set for South Africa and Australia. In a somber turn of events, former Nagaland governor and senior BJP leader PB Acharya passed away at the age of 92 in Mumbai. Hailing from Karnataka, Acharya had a distinguished political career serving as governor in Nagaland, Tripura, Assam, Manipur, and Arunachal Pradesh. Condolences poured in from political leaders with Union Minister Nitin Gadkari highlighting Acharya's unwavering commitment to the party's ideology. Nagaland Governor Laganesan and Chief Minister Nipurio expressed deep sorrow remembering Acharya's warmth hospitality. Nagaland Legislative Assembly Speaker Sharingan Longkumar praised Acharya's honesty, integrity, and initiatives to promote Naga languages. Jeffrey Yadan, the editor-in-chief of Nagaland Post, expressed deep shock, as describing Acharya as a man who kept the doors of his heart open to all. Yadan highlighted Acharya's support for the Swatch Bharat Abhiyan in the Northeast. Former speaker of NLA, Tanucho Tuni, expressed deep sadness, remembering Acharya as a man of humility and a dedicated social worker. In response to the persistent pollution, Delhi Environment Minister Gopal Rai wrote to the UP Transport Minister, urging action on non dustant vehicles entering Delhi from UP to curb pollution on Saturday. In recent developments, part of Delhi NCR experienced light rainfall on Friday, offering temporary relief from the escalated air pollution in the national capital. Despite this, the overall air quality deteriorated entering the severe category with an air quality index of 339 as per Safar data. The Delhi government is actively pursuing artificial rain through cloud seeding around November 20 as a measure to address the pollution crisis. Currently, stage 4 of the Graded Response Action Plan is in effect due to severe air quality. The ongoing festival of Diwali adds to apprehensions 
with Delhi already grappling with hazardous smog. Scientists attribute the worsening pollution to atmospheric conditions post-monsoon, concentrating pollutants due to the shrinkage of the troposphere. The Delhi government's effort to combat pollution include the implementation of the odd-even rule for vehicles from November 13. However, experts express skepticism about the rule's impact, emphasizing the need for comprehensive solutions. They call for a year-round focus on reducing emissions from various sources, where the persistent air pollution crisis in Delhi now demands urgent interventions to safeguard public health and the environment.